Is it ready for some turf? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to do all their shopping yet? Oh wait, who has not done all their shopping yet for Thanksgiving? I'm off Wednesday, so that's on my to-do list. Is my volume good in the back there, Blair? Can you hear me? Turn it up. And turn it up. Better? Better. Better. technology thing isn't working for us today. Between the, uh, the setup and the room of being ready, trying to get the screen to work. Is that good back there? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, welcome. We're glad that you all uh, skipped Monday Night Football and came to join us. Uh, it's a privilege to have you guys. Um, who likes the room set up with the tables? A couple of folks. Well, don't get used to it because this was an accident. Um, it, it actually, I like it because it gives you room for your food and and to write and all that, the challenge is um, we're just not going to have enough space if we have the tables because last month we had about 80 people. Uh, a little bit short, I had a lot of people asking for the video tonight um, because they were traveling for Thanksgiving and they weren't able to make it. So um, the tables are a short lived thing. We'll be back to all of the chairs next month. So, real quick, the um, purpose of the group, the reason that we started this group two years ago, was to bring together investors of all different levels. Um, in different educational statuses to provide relevant real estate education as well as a place to grow your personal network. Back before I did my first deal in 2015, I joined a group just like this. Um, met a ton of people, learned a lot from them, and some of the first wholesale deals that I did were with people in that group. So it was a very valuable resource for me at the time, and I'm like, look, I want to do the group too, um, do it a little bit differently, and um, I think it's been a good thing the last couple of years. A couple of benefits of the group is the biggest thing is just the network. Um, you've heard it before, your net worth is, is your network. So who you hang out with um, is a big deal, especially when it comes to flipping houses and rentals. Try and learn from your own mistakes when there's plenty of people in here that have already made those mistakes themselves. So just pick their brain and avoid the mistakes that they've made. Um, obviously the education through the monthly speakers, uh, the connections, you can get deals done. There's lots of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. We'll talk about our Facebook page in a minute, but um, probably 30% of the folks in the group have done some sort of deal with the group, whether it's bought a house, funded a deal, borrowed money from a deal, um, and then vendor discounts. We just uh, joined an affiliate program that Justin will share with you tonight. Real quick on the disclaimer, there it is. Read it, read it. Good. It's the same thing I've said 18 times over the last year and a half. Um, here's the summary. On any deal that you do, whether it's with someone in this group or someone outside of the group, do your own due diligence. Um, speak with your own professional circle, whether that's your attorneys, your CPAs. If they say, hey, my attorney said we can do this, you probably want to double check that with your own attorney. Investments have risk. You may or may not lose money. Um, someone asked me if we have sharks in this group. Um, and what he meant by that was someone that takes advantage of people that are just getting started. And I told him, I don't know, because it's not like those people come in here with a big sign, hey, I'm a shark. Um, what I did tell him is if we find out, that'll be the, the end of them. But if you're doing your due diligence, talking to your professional circle, um, and, and doing your homework, chances are you're probably going to weed out the people that are trying to take advantage of you. Um, if you do feel like there's someone like that in the group, feel uh, definitely come to us. Um, all of our contact information is available, and uh, let's have a discussion because that's probably not someone that we want in the group. Who did something this past month since the last meeting? John, can you help me out? You did something. What did you do? Yeah, I just kicked people that I know these deals that. Okay, I put a helper in a short sale and I'm hoping to close the next Is that a flip or a rental? It's actually flipping it on my phone. Who else did something? I'll just, I'll just pick all the people that I know what the deals. I bought a, um, I bought a two unit building in the middle of Miami. Yeah, 
Try it again. since March, this uh, last month, and bought a house over at Crown Point, too, so to flip. That's pretty cool. Anyone else do anything? Yeah, we just uh, finished rehabbing the house, and it's on the um, active in the last list, and we're just waiting for a buyer. There you go. That's the fun part, the stressful part. <laughs> I closed the house today. I wish Justin never bought it. <laughs> Holding my breath. Dear God, please no major snow before they close. The driveway had like a 35 degree slope. And it's like a standard length driveway. So they don't need a sledding hill there. Anyone else do anything? That might help. Yeah. Jeez, who's the guy that set this stuff up? Crazy. Anyone else? If you know technology and you want to volunteer and help out, it obviously will be uh, appreciated. Um, whoops, there we go. Uh, who's on our Facebook page? A lot of you. If you're not on that Facebook page, grab your phone and get on it now. Who finds the Facebook page helpful? I might get kicked off the Facebook page. I put a post about Hammond today and I could get in trouble. But I was being very, very nice. Um, this page is very good for asking questions about real estate stuff. So um, here are some of the questions that were asked this month. Um, Sabrina asked about investor-friendly lenders who will work with IRAs as the purchaser. Uh, Jared asked, he's looking for a, li a licensed electrician. Um, Eddie was looking for someone that could refinish bathtubs. Dan is uh, looking for someone that does asbestos. Um, I am looking for three to four people um, who did their first deal in 2018. So if that's you, grab me at the end of the meeting. And then uh, Justin posted this video here, the guy's head's cut off. Um, but a guy sued Hammond. Um, long story, read the articles. It's been going on for years and years and years. It all went all the way down to the um, one of the higher courts in Indiana, and the court said, yes, Hammond can make convert your five-family house into a single-family home, which honestly is probably what it was built for. Um, it's unfortunate for him because he bought it as a five-family. That's how it had been for years. Um, but there was a video from an attorney there uh, talking about that case. So we probably have two or three posts a day um, in this group, people asking for recommendations for contractors, people that have questions about tenant issues, um, or other stuff. Um, so great resource there. What we don't allow is uh, sales in there. So if you're a vendor um, or I don't know, say you're a plumber, don't, don't try to post in the group that you're a plumber and you can do stuff at ABC. If someone asks for a plumber, feel free to put your information there. We also don't do house posts in there. There's enough Facebook group pages for all the house posts. Um, I do have a sticky at the top of the page that has a um, two straight um, signs on it. You can post your deals in there and all of the uh, cash buyers have posted their information there as well. So a great page. Um, let me talk real quick about membership. We really have not pushed this on you guys. Um, it's just kind of been a passive thing. We're up to about 85 active members. But we spent a lot of time and money um, and put a lot of thought into how we can cater to you guys as members. And we're gonna continue to bring you guys uh, new things for our members as we continue to learn about them. It's $10 a month if you're not a member, and that basically covers the food in the room here. Um, if you are uh, members for an individual or 90, if you have a, a spouse or a business partner, it's 135. Some of the perks that we do is a member-only website. And if you are a member and you haven't been on the site, we've had trouble logging in, 
just shoot me an email and I'll reset your login credentials and you can get logged into that. We have all the member contact info on there, so if there's someone at the group that you met and you lost their card, you can get their info on that. Uh, more importantly though, we go back to probably March or April of last year, we have videos of all of these meetings. So there's probably tons of stuff that you've missed from not being here um, that's valuable and that's available there. We just joined an affiliate program called Think Realty. Justin will talk a little bit more about that. Um, we get monthly magazines from them. And uh, if you got your member box, um, does anyone have a box I can borrow real quick? Awesome. I apologize, the boxes were a little bit bigger than they looked like online, so we'll work on that. Um, and we're gonna you know, modify this, but members got um, a water bottle with our logo on it. This uh, case here, it's actually, when, I, when Justin first got this, I'm like, that's stupid. Um, but as I, as I was at some networking events and stuff, it actually would have come in handy. Um, so I'll give them props for the idea. It's a little business card holder, and it has a sticky, goes on the back of your phone, so instead of having like, you know, trying to put your cards in your pocket where they get all mangled up, you just have them on the back there. Um, and then we have a notebook for you to take notes at the meeting at. And then this is the magazine um, that we'll have. So. Um, every member, every month that you come in, you can grab a magazine. If you miss a meeting, we'll have some of the past meetings as well. So those are for, for members. If you're not a member and you want to join, um, talk to Christy at the end of the night. These rates are good for this year um, because the cost of everything is going up. And I'm sure you're seeing that in your rehabs and all that. Our rates for next year will go up as well. But uh, Justin, if you want to come up and talk about Think Realty. In the so slide, so just so, you're, so we're clear, the business card holder for the cell phone is a good idea. It, it, it was a good idea. <laughs> Buying Hunter's Corp was not a good idea. Yeah. All right, so Think Realty has a lot of different businesses, over 80 um, under their umbrella. Um, but they've done a pretty good job with the real estate side, and they're trying to provide a lot of content for you guys. Um, and quite honestly, they're, they're providing five, six, seven hundred dollars for the magazines a month just for, just for members. So part of their benefits, um, and everybody should have a piece of paper from them. Does everybody have one? They have a website. You are signing up as my affiliate. Uh, so you get credit for it. You can either text it or go to the uh, website, whatever's easier for you. And then once you get in there, you're gonna log in. It's gonna ask you for some information. And then you'll have a dashboard. Um, well, once you log in, you can choose the free, that obviously it's free. Um, if you want to take it further, you can pay them. They have a lot of training videos and stuff, some good information there. Uh, but once you sign up for the account, it'll get into your dashboard. And then, as you can see, all the different logos on there, they have discounts for stuff. Now, some of you may be buying huge amounts of Sherwin-Williams paint. So, like, when I check with my contractor, he's already getting, you know, probably 30% off or better because he's got huge volume. But his discounts may be different than what Think Realties are. Um, so, sign up, sign up for each vendor, they're going to give you, they'll send you a code a couple days later that you can bring to Sherwin Williams or, you know, I don't think there's 84 lumber around here, but um, even if you just use it for office supplies, I mean, something's better than nothing off. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything. So, um, actually, when I sign up for Sherwin Williams, they give you 50% off of, like, purdy brushes, so if you buy good brushes, they give you 50% off on a couple different lines of paint, so... Even if you just use it one time, the 50% uh, may be worth the hassle. Um, I was at um, Sherman Williams getting paint this weekend for my own basement that I'm finishing up, and their sticker on the shelf was like $70 a gallon for the type of paint that I was getting, but with this discount, I got it for $30 a gallon. So I only spent 500 instead of but probably would have been 1100 in paint. Yeah, and these, dis these discounts overlap too. So if you get, just because you have a discount that's, that's better on something else doesn't mean you can't use this for a different product line or something. So just suggest that you text it, it'll send you a link to sign up, give it a shot, see if it makes a discount, you know, if it makes a difference. Give us feedback too. I mean, it's free, it doesn't cost us anything, but um, like to see what you guys are seeing as far as the discount, see if it makes sense uh, to continue the program. If not, at the very least for the, for the free content they give you because if you look, you know, they, they have news articles and stuff that they write, they put out content so you can stay on top of what the market's doing, you know, are we headed towards a correction, you know, 
what, what does investing look like in different states. And, uh, you know, it's free. Any questions? I did. We have any open chairs? Oh, thank you. Right in the middle. I use that super pick. Who uses that stuff? It's amazing. It's literally one coat paint. And it smells good too. And my kids thought it was pretty cool because it was super paint. Alright, I don't think I told John today. Today was a crazy day. Would anyone be opposed if we move this meeting to Monday or to Tuesday nights? Yay, nay. Yay. 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 Yeah, okay, we'll maybe talk about that for next year. Um, Mondays are kind of challenging all the way around the board. So I don't think I told John that he's doing this next slide. Um, but John, this is your part now. Oh, wow. Exciting. John's a little more exciting than I am, so I'm going to do the fun stuff. How about those beers? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we want Kansas City to win tonight, right? Because we want the Rams to lose so that we get a bye in the first round of the playoffs, right? Can I get a right on that? Right. All right. So, first time guest introductions. Please raise your hands if you're a first time guest. We'll run. We'll start here. Not only do I want your name, where you're from, and what you'd like to get out of the meeting, but I also want to know what your favorite cereal is.
Cheerio. <laughs> Three Cheerios in the house. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeff Padugas from Crown Point. Um, looking to find some rentals out here, just learn the market a little bit more. And uh, definitely Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes, oh my god, <laughs> with bananas. <laughs> Uh, my name is John Parton, and uh, right now I'm actually vaping Captain Crunch with the berries. Oh. Um, <laughs> I didn't know they had that flavor. It's pretty cool. It's actually what made me a vapor. And uh, I'm here just uh, to learn more about the business. The next two guys, I buy a lot of houses. So. And I bumped into John at Tomato Bar today. He didn't know he was coming to the meeting. Yes, pretty wild. He didn't invite me either, so... Hi, my name is Nicolai, I'm from Crown Point, I'm a manager broker, I work for different investors, and I'm here actually looking for crews. I got five houses ready to flip, I need people. Cereal? I'm uh, sorry, I don't need to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. I just, uh, anyone else? My name is Joe Jackson. Uh, my name is uh, Will Spurrett, I'm from Hattie, Indiana. I'm here to run as much as possible. We have a lot of people party. And I like Cheerios. Cheerios. Four Cheerios. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you all giving us a try. Hopefully, it doesn't scare you away. Can you come back? Um, we do. This is your part. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just hand the books out. There we go. All right, this is the part of the show where we. Uh, this is the part of the show. This is the part of the show uh, where we uh, appreciate the fact that you not only attended the meeting, but also brought a guest. And those that brought a guest will receive a raffle ticket, and uh, we have a, a few here today. Today we're giving away three different books, or actually two different books. Um, first, what is that? This is Indiana Eviction Law, written by Attorney Peterson out of Munster. Uh, fantastic read, so if you're a landlord, I would encourage you. We can get more copies of this. Um, so if, if you don't win this tonight because you didn't bring a guest, and you want a copy, get a hold of us, and we'll connect with Peterson and get you some copies. So the first two will go for that. So grab one, grab two. Um, I can't read that with these new glasses. Leslie. Bay more? Base more. Congratulations. Someone up here can draw for you. Alright. Alright. Uh Dijon Crawford? Dion. Dion Crawford. I mean, we gotta work on your glasses too. <laughs> this is crazy, or we have to get better. Uh, this last book's a self-directed IRA book. We each ordered it for last month's meeting, uh, but unfortunately with Amazon, some of the stuff comes super, super fast. Some of it is delayed. This one was delayed. But another fantastic book on self-directed IRA. Right. Right. That's the problem. This is Dave. There we go. Dave. Dave. Round of applause, everybody. Round of applause. You're writing the whole meeting. Oh, here we go. Oh, you have one more part. Oh, Hurry up. More? Steve wants to get up here and talk. Um, Thursday, December 6th, Thursday Night Football at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're hosting a investor appreciation event. We would love for all of you to come. We've got, I guess they got plenty of wings and fries and drinks. The first 50 folks to sign up will receive a free uh, drink ticket and we'll have some door prizes as well. We just want to say thank you for a wonderful year as we look forward to 2019. So uh, take a look at that. Text to invest NWI to 38470. Can you guys do that now? What about your phones? Only if you want to go. Only if you want to go. They're only doing like 360 bone-in wings, 360 boneless wings. So when we run out of food, they just run out of luck? Yeah.
Those 50 beverage tickets that you get, if you're one of the first 50 to RSVP, that's an adult beverage. It's not like a Diet Coke. No. So <laughs> you don't get one of those first 50. The drinks are on you. No, show the tickets. So now we're going to hit probably about 90 houses that we sell off market this year. Um, so we appreciate everyone that looks at our houses and, and works with us. So this is our way of saying thank you for that. So thank you, John, for you doing a fantastic job with your three parts tonight. All right, everybody. Thank you. All right, if you uh, want to come up, Steve. I met Steve several years ago at one of the houses I bought that had some really bad foundation walls. Um, rekindled our relationship uh, about six weeks ago at a house that I had to have inspected for my inspection, and it was honestly the silliest job that they needed done. Would you agree? Have you done anything that small? No, that was pretty good. It, it was stupid. Um, anyhow, I wanted to bring Steve in because we since we wholesale so many houses, we run across a lot of times where there's some issues, whether it's seepage or bowed walls or settling or, or whatever it is. And a lot of times, you know, it's the people that are getting those deals and making a killing are people that have done that type of work before and they have the experience. The people that have no clue how much to, uh, something like that's going to cost or even how you fix it, they're not putting offers in because they just don't know. So I wanted to bring Steve in. Steve has over 20 years of experience. Um, in the business, he knows what he's done. He's probably seen most of uh, the issues out there. Um, although I did just hear of a job that you passed on, um, the Cedar Lake House. Oh, I heard all four of the companies that do foundation work said no. Uh, the, I, the guy called me, he's like, can you sell it? Is, is he in here? I hope not. Um, I told him just to knock it down. And that's <laughs> like, it, it was bad. It was, I guess they, poured, they had a broken floor joist and they kept pouring concrete over the floors to settle it and it kept breaking and they pour more in. It was just bad. But um, Steve's going to walk us through some of the major foundation issues, how they fix it, kind of give you an idea on the cost. Um, you can just click that, that'll go through. So, thank you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, asking me to come today. My name is Steve Davis, uh, Davis Concrete Correctors. Uh, any of you heard of this before? You? Oh, several times. Okay. Um, but uh, many that have not, and that's a good thing. I'm glad to hear that because uh, we do have a relationship with a lot of different house flippers or people that have a lot of rentals. Um, and so we like, we like to, to meet people like you uh, because, uh, honestly, we do a lot of residential, obviously, but um, uh, when we do work for somebody, that's probably the last time we're going to work for them. You know, a homeowner, particular one particular homeowner. But when we work with you, we have an opportunity to work with you uh, a lot more often. And so we like that. So we like building those relationships. And what we've tried to do with our, with our um, uh, house flippers and people that are investors and that kind of thing, if we try to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with you very personally so that we kind of, we know what you're working with, with time frames, you got to get things done quickly. And so you can move on to the next phase of uh, the rehab. So we try to get you done as quickly as we can, move you up to the front and get you done. So we try to uh, uh, help you have a little bit more professional um, experience with uh, a contractor than what you have sometimes. So, uh, so we try to work with you there. Let me give you a little bit of background uh, as to us and what we do and how we started this. Actually, uh, my uh, kid brother started this business, uh, the first Davis Concrete Correctors in central Illinois. Uh, in 91 and so uh, I was doing estate planning and, and this type of thing and, and trust work and I would do seminars like this for people elderly people and uh, teach them how to protect their assets and various things like that but as time went on um, I would work with my brother off and on just for stress relief and uh, and kind of ended up learning his business and I said man we have a market for this over here in Northwest Indiana, and I said I would like to start. So, it, it actually, it actually, uh, June first was our 20-year anniversary uh, in this business, and we've we've stepped it up a, a several notches since then to improve on what we do. Give you just a little bit of background into uh, the types of things we do, and then we can talk more specifically about uh, uh, about different things, and even open it up if you have some questions. And that kind of thing, and I'm I'm willing to stick around as long as you need to, to uh, if you have any particular questions. And of course, we've got we've got some flyers, we've got some business cards out on the table there. Feel free to grab that, 
and uh, be happy to uh, talk with you about any of uh, answering questions more. But well, the biggest surprise that I had tonight was that nobody picked Wheaties. I mean, isn't this the breakfast of champions? Isn't that what they say? And we got a group of champions here. Nobody picked Wheaties. I couldn't believe it. But uh, oh, well, those things happen. So anyway, uh, some, just a run through real quick of some of the things, our hot topics and the things that we do. Uh, we started off, the very first thing we started with back in the day was concrete raising. Uh, if you're familiar with the term mud jacking, slab jacking, anybody know about that? Okay, if you, if you don't know what that is, you don't <coughs> always have to replace concrete. Your driveways, your patios, your, uh, you might have a pitch towards the house, you might have uh, unlevel areas you might have. We've taken staircases beside a house, if, if this is the house here, and a uh, staircase beside the house here, and, and, it's, and it's more like this, and we've straightened them completely. And so we can raise stuff, we can raise patios, driveways, garage floors, you name it, um, flat work. Um, we've even raised the side of garages and everything. There's just so many different kinds of things we can do. So concrete raising is one of our biggest things that we do. Very important. There's, we are, there are competitors in the area here that do that. I don't. I know for a fact there's nobody that does the job that we do. You're going to find some guys that are cheaper. If you need some cheap guys' names, I can give you some names there. But but you're, if you keep the house especially, or if the person wants it to stay up very long, they're going to be calling and saying, hey, this didn't last. Mud jacking doesn't work. Well, it doesn't if you don't do it right. And if you don't use the right material, if you don't have the right consistency of the material, how, how you mix it, I can go over all that at another time. All those things are extremely important, the placement of your holes. What we do with concrete raising is we drill holes through the slab about this big around, about an inch and a quarter, and then we pump a crushed limestone slurry mixture down through those holes, spreads out underneath the slab, and it raises the, the slab up in place. Uh, then we clean the holes out and patch the holes, and uh, uh, and we can talk about pricing. Typically, you're going to be looking at. Think of it this way: if you're looking for, for kind of a ballpark, real fast number. Um, if you're doing a driveway, any kind of flat work, if you get somebody reputable, you're probably looking at ten bucks a square foot for tear out and re-floor, uh, at least. And you can figure on a third to a half of that cost probably, depending on how far down it is, how many pieces it's broken up into, various things like that. But you're usually half or less uh, for the cost, okay? Uh, so, so we do concrete raising. Another thing that we do is a lot of foundation type issues. So basement walls that are bowed in, um, we have people call us and they say, my wall is, whoa, I'm sorry, <laughs> dropping my stuff here. Um, my wall is bowing out. Well, it's not bowing out, it's bowing in, it can't bow out. You know, there's dirt behind it. You can't bow out, but it's bowing in. But when they're looking at it, it almost looks like it's bowing out because the top looks like it's tipped. But uh, especially on block walls, but it's actually bowed in. We can do one of two different things. We can brace it right where it's at, or we can dig out behind it. And we can straighten the wall. There's many different ways of doing it. We've researched every single system. We've been to World of Concrete shows. We've been. Every, I know every system out there, I know the pluses and minuses, the uh, pros and cons of each system. We don't do it the way we do it because it's just the way we're taught and that's what we know to do. We do it this way because we know it's the only way that works permanently. And what we do, if this were your basement wall, we, and your wall is bowed in, we take uh, four inch steel I-beams and we mount them into the floor, uh, right uh, where the floor meets the wall. It would come up, since your wall is bowed out, it would come up, and uh, we dig out on the outside if we're straightening it, and then we have a jack system up into the floor joist, and we push against the beams, and it straightens the wall back out. Okay, if it's, if it's not real bad, um, we can just brace it right where it's at, and it actually will be far stronger than when it was a brand new wall. And the reason being is because we've got counter pressure, counterized pressure, we've got uh, now equalized pressure, I should say, um, uh, keeping the wall from being able to move. It wouldn't be any better than what it is uh, now, but it could not get any worse. And we give a lifetime guarantee with it, which if you put a brand new wall in, you, you, um, uh, you won't get one day guarantee uh, warranty with that. 
And I'll, I'll tell you, since we started doing this in 91, we've never even had a warranty call where somebody's called and said, hey, we got a problem with our wall. Uh, started blowing back in again. I would say that every other system that I am aware of, and I think I know all of them out there, we've replaced every one of those systems multiple times. So uh, we can do that. There are times when we can't use I-beams. Maybe there's some duct work in the way or various things. We can use carbon fiber strips uh, if need be as well. Uh, so um, let, let me ask you a question, kind of get you engaged a little bit. How many of you, ha of you have looked at foundation issues in a scare job? And you said, ah, forget that. Yeah? Okay, a lot of hands just went up. For those of you sitting in the front, not seeing in the back, a lot of hands went up. Let me ask you then, do you think that if, you, if, took, if we took the mystery out of it and it wasn't so complicated and so scary, do you think you'd have a lot better opportunity because all these other people raised their hands and say, yeah, I walked away from it. So now that would give me an edge and I would have an opportunity to get something at a pretty reasonable price because nobody else wants to touch it. Do you think you'd have a pretty good chance with that? Probably so. Some of the other things that we do as well, we um, do waterproofing, interior drain tile waterproofing. And the reason that we do it that way, as opposed to exterior, is because you cannot guarantee that you'll get rid of the water out of your basement if you do it on the exterior. I know there's a lot of people out there doing it, mostly because that's the way they know how to do it. And that's the way they've been trained. But um, water comes in, water, it, it, let, me, let me back up and say this. What I always ask people that have already gotten estimates for doing the exterior drain tile, I ask them, okay, um, how do you know for sure they're going to be able to correct the problem doing it on the exterior? Digging up around the house and tearing up the yard, which you're going to have to re-landscape and everything else. How do you know for sure? Well, they said it will work. And I always ask them, ask how long of a guarantee they give you. They can't. They can't guarantee it. So, but we do. We give a lifetime guarantee of it. Because water is going to come in one of two different ways. Either it's going to leak in through the block if you have block walls or through cracks. So it'll work its way down. You'll get mold on the inside, okay, uh, of the block. The water starts filling up in the block. It'll find ways to shoot in uh, through the block. Um, but the most common way is water will come up underneath. As the ground gets saturated with water, the water table starts rising. As the water table starts rising, it has no uh, boundaries. It has nothing holding it back outside. It just keeps rising up. But when it's rising up under the foundation floor, under the basement floor, now it creates what's called hydrostatic pressure. That's where you get your cracks in your basement floors. And it starts pushing on the floor. And the, the easiest place for it to come in is between the floor and the footing in the wall. So it comes right up around the perimeter. That's where you normally see your water coming in. So what we do is we dig out, we break out a section of the floor about a foot wide, and maybe one wall, maybe all the way around, whatever we need to do to correct the issue. And then we dig down beside the footing and we put the drain tile on the inside instead of on the outside. So that when we, uh, and, and once we've got that in, then we also drill weep holes into the block. <clears throat> okay, underneath the floor. So if any water does try to fill in, fill it up in the block, it drains out and down to the drain system. Then we can reconcrete the floor in, and once we're done, all the water has now a place to go. And there's no more hydrostatic pressure, and we relieve it permanently, and it's done and over with. We also do... Uh, Liner systems for crawl spaces, crack injections, things like that. So um, maybe what I ought to do is scroll through some of our before and after pictures. Let's you take a look at some of the things that we've done. Um, and if you have some questions, you might want to write that down real quick. Um, so this is a, a sample of our mud jacking. This is a driveway where it meets the garage floor. And you can see it's down about eh, two, three inches there, all the way across. And uh, here's what it looked like when we got it done. And you can see the one little hole right there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. um, that's an, uh, so uh, we would drill those holes across uh, the driveway so that we could pump the crushed limestone slurry underneath, brace it up, and we rubber caulk between the floor, uh, the garage floor and the driveway. And, um, and it's, it, 
usable within two days. So you don't have to wait several weeks before you drive on it. And so it works. They're probably, we probably do far more mud jacking than anybody else in the area. And we have more experience doing this than anyone else. Got a question back here? So what would that repair cost? I'm sorry? What would that repair cost? The, uh, the cost? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really hard to say. That's why I try to, what I tell people to do is figure what your square footage is. And then, because um, um, I don't know what all we did here. Uh, you see the drive, or the sidewalk that goes, curves around, you see that? And it goes to the front door. Um, it's going to be half or less, maybe a third to a half. Um, so if that's all we were doing right there, you might be looking at <clears throat> maybe um, twelve hundred bucks or something. I I'm going to guess. Um, uh, did that help any? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's another driveway that's beside. This is a typical Highland mm -hmm. uh, Griffith, you know, home with a narrow lot. So you have your garage in the back. Um, and the driveway right beside the house. Um, and so we can raise that up and straighten it out and get a positive flow so the water's running away. And that's what it looked like when we were done. Uh, it takes a little while for the holes to cure out, but you know the driveway, the holes, the caulking that we all those cracks we caulked that with the rubberized caulk. And so um, in, in a little short amount of time, it starts getting dirty and blending in with the rest of the driveway. So, uh, this one here was one we did. Actually, I think this one was, if I remember right, that was a feature. And this was carbon fiber that we put on the walls. Um, uh, a lot of, they, they had a finished ceiling. They didn't want to have to rip that all out, and we just braced it right where it was. So it, it was a good candidate for the carbon fiber. This is um, uh, a picture of the interior drain tile system. Um, Here's your basement wall over here. Here's your footing coming across. Here's the trench that we dug, and we broke out this section of the, of the concrete all the way around. And then we put our drain system in, and then we could drill holes into the bottom of the block to relieve the pressure and let the water run out. There's times we drilled in, and water just gushed out. We did a job. Um, remember all the rain we got this past spring? It was nuts. And um, uh, we were... Uh, one of the worst jobs that I've been involved in that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of them, was in Griffith. Uh, I, uh, I walked down the stairs, got to the bottom of the stairs, and there was so much hydrostatic pressure that the basement floor was buckled. Uh, not just cracked, it was buckled. It was a hump. There was a big hill in the concrete floor. And I said, what's going on here? And I, you know, here, here I am with 20 years experience and you know, I'm looking at this floor and asking him, what happened? He said, I don't know. He said, it just came. I said, well, you know, it has to be the hydrostatic pressure. But it was like he was sitting on a, on a river. Water just all over the place. So, um, so I told the guys, I said, when we start this job, we're going to start. He did have a sump pit, fortunately. I said, get the pumps ready because there's so much water under this floor. When we start drilling and breaking the floor out, it's coming up. So we started breaking, we drilled into the floor, and it was like geysers, just water shooting up. It was crazy. Like, it, you would think we were drilling it up into a houseboat or something, you know, it's just water just shooting up everywhere. And, and, um, and we, in one day, we got all of the floor broken out all the way around. So then the next day, we were coming back to put the drain system in. When we came back the next morning to start putting the drain system in, the floor had already settled back down. Couldn't believe it. Um, <clears throat> because there was that much hydrostatic pressure underneath. Um, yes? Can you give us an idea of how much that's going to cost for the new foot? Yes. Um, it's going to depend on a few variables, uh, but I would say typically what we try to do for the house flippers and people like you, we don't do this for the average homeowner, but you're going to look at $45 to $50 a linear foot. Okay? Um, so a, a typical house... Griffith, Highland, you know, some of the, it's going to be like, say, uh, uh, 20, or uh, 40 by 30, let's say, okay? So then you've got 140 linear feet times that by 45 or 50. If we have to put a sump pit and a pump in, um, you're going to look at probably another grand. 
Um, if we if we wanted to put a battery backup system in with that, a top of the line battery backup, then probably another grand on top of that. Okay. Any questions there? So yeah. So you're going for housing, you're in the basement, and you know a lot of things that you can't be. What are some of the things you shouldn't be looking for? Okay. When you, when you go down there and, and you know. Very very good question. So obviously the water. Mm -hmm. the water there's maybe something going on. But, uh, okay. Very good questions. Uh, if you couldn't hear that, he asked, what kind of things would you look for if you're going in a basement and you really don't know, what am I supposed to look for? Okay, look for some things like if the walls are exposed, where you can see the block walls or you can see the concrete walls, look for hairline cracks, uh, poured walls, look for cracks. Um, in your poured walls, windows, well, in any walls, your windows are your weak areas, okay? In block basement walls, you're going to see from your corners, okay, let's say, let's pretend we're in a basement. You're going to see, uh, start looking for uh, stair step cracking from the corner, either from the top down to about the freeze line, okay, about where the ground level is outside. Or you might see it from down below and stair step up, and then it will continue across, and then um, you will, um, you'll know that you've got some bowing, some movement. If you've got a straight edge, Find anything, a broom handle, um, you know, if you've got a level, a uh, piece of two by four, or whatever you find, sit it on that wall and see if it rocks. If it rocks, you've got some movement, you've got a bowed wall. Now, bowed walls are going to be different. Bowed walls, if you've got your house here and this is your wall, uh, I'm sorry, a, a block wall is going to be different than a poured wall. It will bow in like this, okay? But a poured wall doesn't do that. A poured wall, you'll see cracks like angling like this. And then if you've got your floor up here, your, what's called your sill plate sitting on the top of the wall, it will bow in like this. It'll just, it'll crack like diagonally like I was saying, and then it will just put, the whole thing will push over. Okay, so look for things like that. Um, look for any signs of um, some mold or where some water's come in, especially around your base, base coat area. Okay, um, so you definitely want to look for those. Um, if the walls are finished off, um, drywall, panel, whatever, um, try to look in your window wells and, and look to see if that window is tipped a little bit. Look for that. That could be a sign that the wall is bowing a little bit. Um, look to see if, uh, if there's... Um, you know, like this window here, we've got this much uh, build out here. Look to see if maybe it's built out way out here. Say, well, how come it's built out so far? Did the homeowner maybe know that there's a bowed wall here, so they, they framed out <laughs> quite a ways out away from the bow? Um, things like that. Look for things uh, along those lines. Yeah, some pictures in here. Oh, yeah, we've got some pictures. And if you go on our website, we've got a lot of information for you there, a lot of before and afters. All of that kind of thing. Anything else? How about some questions? Yeah, your drain tile. After you install it, you put concrete back over. Yes. So you don't lose any square footage. You don't lose any square footage, okay. and you won't see it because it's going to be under the. <coughs> it is your, your concrete foundations. I've seen some that had so many spider cracks and the walls were bloated. Have you ever seen them where they were unrepairable? Were they what? Unrepairable. Um, almost ever. Now Adrian just mentioned one that we uh, turned down. That almost never happens. That particular gentleman, uh, great guy, but I told him the other day, I said, you know, you got to stop buying these houses that are that should be condemned. You know, there are certain ones that just, just walk away from it. That particular house that Adrian was talking about, it was in Cedar Lake, and um, it was one of those houses that probably cost about $59 to build, you know. It did have very good construction and, and no codes for anything. So it was a slot, it was a um, crawl space that was only probably about that deep, you know, one of those kind where there's no way you could get underneath of it to work on anything if you had to. And it and the floor joists started rotting and it started dropping. So they said, let's see, what can we do to fix that? I know what we can do. Let's pour some concrete on top of the floor. So they poured concrete on top of the floor. So we we had thought, well, maybe we could go in and mud jack that floor and just raise it up. Problem is, they built walls on the interior after everything had sunk, 
And now what are we going to do? We're going to lift the floor and push the roof right up off of it? Or, you know, it's like, no, I don't want to be liable for this place. No, just tear it down and start over. Uh, so, so, yes. Uh, is your warranty uh, transferable to the pre like if I sell a house to Matt? Uh, the warranty for your foundation or your mud jacket uh, transferable? Very good, very good questions. Um, for our, um, we have transfer, uh, lifetime warranty on our basement wall bracing and straightening, lifetime warranty on our waterproofing, and those are transferable to new homeowners. And um, for our mud jacking, um, think of it this way. Um, if you pour new concrete, you don't get one guarantee. For, well, you, they do. They guarantee that the concrete will crack, and it will get hard. That's about all that they're guaranteed. Um, they don't guarantee anything else at all. Now, we give a two-year warranty on our mud jacket, concrete racing. The uh, reason we don't give more is because we cannot guarantee soil. We can't guarantee that different soils will shift, settle, move, um, freezing, thawing cycles. But what we can guarantee is our workmanship, that we will pump enough material to fill it underneath and... and um, and give it a good solid base underneath. But whatever is underneath our material, if that shrinks or settles or washes out, our material will have to you know, settle down with that, obviously. But we guarantee our workmanship. So what we, we do, we give you two full years. Yeah, well, let me say this first. If we uh, did not do our job right and we didn't put enough material underneath the slab to begin with, it will start showing up in the first few months. And so then we give you two full years to make sure that uh, we did the job right. Okay? We had a lady, think of it this way, uh, one, probably one of the most difficult areas to mudjack would be something that's shifting sands. We did a job years ago, uh, well, probably our first year, 20 years ago now, uh, up in Miller near the, the lake. And um, we raised all of our sidewalks, sidewalks in the driveway, everything. And I didn't remember who she was, but here a couple years ago, she called us and she said, um, I bought the house next door to me to fix up and sell, and I want you to come raise up all the concrete at that house. She said, because you did mine 18 years ago on all the sand bluffs and everything, all the sand, um, and she said it hasn't moved at all in 18 years. And I know we just moved from our place... Um, Three years ago, we had lived there for 14 years, raised the sidewalks up probably six or eight inches. Uh, they were, when we moved there, the guy told us, he said, there's sidewalks underneath, the, uh, beside the house here, down, uh, uh, but there's gravel everywhere. I said, sidewalks where? He said, yeah, they're down there, so we got a shovel and we started digging. Yeah, there's sidewalks, five foot wide sidewalks, and they're around the house. We dug all the, that off, we raised it up probably six inches or better. And uh, we, were, we lived there 14 years, and they never moved. So, um, so we, we, we do it to make it last. Um, let me uh, show you. Here's a sump that we were installing with the interior drain system. Here's where we um, are pouring the concrete back in. There's the finished product. Uh, when we were done uh, re-pouring the concrete. Here's our... Um, we installed a battery backup system with a sump kit in a crawl space, and this is our liner system. Now, there's a lot of different liners uh, that are out there for crawl spaces. Liners are good to have. Uh, can you imagine anybody uh, building a basement and not putting a floor in it? You, you would never do that. But that's what they do with crawl spaces, you know, and no floor. And, and so you've got all this dirt and mold and mildew and, and smell uh, from the uh, about two feet from the floor of your house and all those bugs and everything else and, and, and that's what you've got right underneath your floor. So we can put liners in. Now there's uh, other types of liners that your typical liner is going to be a, a 10 millimeter, maybe up to a 20 millimeter thickness. Ours is a 90 millimeter. It's got several layers and it allows um, uh, this, we've got a silver side to it that goes on the walls and it helps reflect heat back up into the house. It helps hold down radon gases and a lot of different things. So it's not just your typical liner, but it is very, very efficient. Yes? What would be the price per square foot for that type of... For this year? Um, 
typically you're going to look at um, about $3.50 a, a square foot. Now when you do that, don't just figure the square foot of your floor, figure the square foot of your walls. Okay? So if you got 40 foot by 30 foot by 40 foot by 30 foot, so take your uh, 40, 80, 140, 140 linear feet times, say, three and a half feet high or whatever it might be, um, and then add that in, of course, for your square footage. Yes? Yes, so the price you support is for your liners? For the liners, yes. And then back to your, your, drain, your drain system, how do you determine if you're going to, I've seen you don't always put your own sunken on your system? Oh, okay. Now, good, good, good questions. Uh, he's asking, um, do we put our own sump pit in? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. If it's a, if it's already, if it already has a, a sump pit that is plastic, we'll keep that and use it, save you some money. Um, if it's the old clay tile kind of pit or a concrete pit, we're going to break that out and put a plastic liner in. But I mean, your system won't tap into the existing sump pit that's in the house. It will if it's a plastic liner. Because see what we'll have to do, we'll have to cut slots into it to put our drain system in. So if it's plastic, we can do that. If it's the old concrete or the clay tile type pit, uh, we won't be, we'll try to cut into that. It'll just crumble. It'll just break. And that will overwhelm that pit from the outside drain tile and then the drain tile that you put on the inside of the basement? No, because typically your old drain system on the outside is not working, and that's why you're calling us in anyway. Um, so it's either uh, not working or it's clogged or, you know, it's just not efficient. It's not doing the job. Now make sure that when you look for a pit, that you're looking for the, uh, see if there's a pit. Don't just see a pit and think, oh, yep, we got a sump pit. It might be an injector pit. You know the difference? Okay. An injector pit is for sewage or gray water like your washing machine. Okay. And, and the way you'll know is, number one, it normally has a sealed lid so you don't get the smell. Okay. Also, look to see where the pipe goes. Is it coming up and tying into the sewer? If it ties into the sewer, that's your injector pit. We can't tie um, groundwater for a drain system into that type of a pit. We have to have a septic, a, a, a sump pit. Okay. It, it, it looks the same, but they're two different animals, two different things. Does that make sense? Okay. How do you seam that liner? I'm sorry? How do you seam that liner? you got a vertical and horizontal liner. How do you seam it? Yeah. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, you got four corners coming together, and you got the floor and the walls. Oh, 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 oh. good. Yeah, good question. Two different ways. Number one, we have a, a butyl tape. We've got this... Uh, um, it's almost like a caulk, but man, once you put it together, it's not coming apart. Okay. And then we also, on the surface of, so we do that, in, we overlap them, and then we, so we glue it in between the two, and then we have a surface tape that's very, very sticky, and then we tape it down as well. And I, I'll give you just a personal example of how wonderful this stuff is. My mother-in-law has always had health issues, as long as I've known her. Uh, especially respiratory things, just a lot of things. Uh, battled cancer several times, uh, chronic fatigue, many things, many things. But she's had a lot of respiratory problems. Well, she, her house is built out four hours from here in, in over by Flint, Michigan area. And um, and she has no sons. I'm, I'm her son. And I help her take care of things for her. Well, some friends of hers called uh, me one day and said, you need to come and look at her basement. She's out in the middle of the sticks, out in the woods, and built, her house is built on a, on a hill, I mean a hill, the side of the house. You know, so so if, if you're looking at the house straight on like this, um, the hill comes like this, and so the left half of her house is built on a crawl space, the right half is, is basement. And so, when the house was built, they just built a wood wall right in the middle, and half his basement and half his crawl space. So if you open up the hatch and look inside the wooden wall, you see the dirt, you know, from, from the hill. So um, she had a pillar on the side of that dirt uh, that was supporting the center beam of the house. 
it slid off that dirt and it was leaning against the wood wall. And so I had to get some guys together. We went up there and took that wood wall out. We pulled that concrete out, broke it out, got rid of it, put a new post in, everything, put the wall back in, make a long story short, a few, a couple weeks later, she started having all kinds of respiratory problems. She couldn't breathe. And breathing machines and everything was just horrible. Well, she ended up uh, in the hospital and they couldn't find out what was wrong. She was in there for three or four days and just said, you're better. I don't know. I don't know why. And they just sent her home. So uh, after they sent her home, she started getting sick again. And I told her, I said, Mom, I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is, I don't smell anything. I don't smell any mold. And, and, and that dirt was like petrifying concrete. I mean, it's just hard as a rock. I said, all I can tell you is we can try putting the liner in. We'll come up and put a liner in and see what happens. We did that. Within days, she was better. I mean, it took, um, this can, we, we did a house in Portage that, and I, moldy smells just don't normally bother, I mean, I smell it, but it's like, it doesn't bother me. I don't get where I can't breathe and all that stuff like a lot of people do. So I walked in there, man, the mold smell about knocked me over. It was horrible in the house. And they were going to flip the house. And I had to get down in the crawl space and crawl around in there and, and look around there and get all the spiders in my hair and all that stuff. So, uh, so uh, uh, I go down in there and I'm looking around and I'm like, I don't know how they're, they're even going to be able to sell this place. The mold was so horrendous. Well, they got the mold uh, sprayed and everything and, uh, and taken care of. We went in and put the liner in. And I couldn't believe it when we were done. I went back in a few days later. You couldn't even smell the mold. Wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. So it really works well. Um, we also do crack injection in, um, into basement wall cracks, uh, pour walls. You cannot do crack injection in block walls because they're hollow, okay? Uh, you only can do crack injection in pour walls, so we can do that too. You're gonna look at probably $60 to $70, depending on the width and everything of the cracks, um, for your basement wall. Um, cracks. So uh, if you see your cracks, get a ballpark idea. Typically, you're looking at what? Uh, if it's from straight top to bottom, seven feet, eight feet, whatever it might be, uh, count up your cracks, uh, get a ballpark idea. Sixty to seventy dollars a linear foot for crack injection. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing here. Here's here's a sample of the liner on the inside of the crawl space. Here's basically what we did uh, in Crown Point this year. Um, I don't know if you can see, here's this wall coming this way. Can you see that big gap here? That wall, there's a driveway on the other side of this wall. And it puts in, I'm not joking yet, like this. It was so bad, when we took the patching out that was in there, I could stick my arm between the block. It, it was that bad. Um, normally, um, we can brace them, and I said, no way, we can straighten this one. The, the inspector, the town planning inspector guy, he didn't think that we could straighten this. We straightened it. And um, uh, the wall, let me see if my son sent the right pictures here. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> temporarily, we just put some bracing up to hold the wall in, pl in place temporarily until we got done. Um, uh, digging out of the outside so we could actually straighten it. Yes? What did the exterior shell look like? Was it start to sag? No. No. It, it, it's really nuts. You know, probably because your block is eight inches wide. Yeah. So that when it tips, it's not dropping. It's not sinking. It, it's still it, it's still the same height. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But um, I don't know think he has the picture. There was a doorway when, that, that you could see in another picture where the doorway was like this. <laughs> because it had shoved the bottom over so far. It was just crazy. Um, and this is what it looked like when we got done. We wow. pushed it back in place, put the beams in place, patched everything up. Now, if you're looking for prices for this, look at your wall, um, get your link. We're going to typically put beams about every four feet apart. 
Okay? We want to put them close enough together. Now, there are other guys doing their stuff, but I'm going to tell you, they don't know what they're doing. And I don't say that to just badmouth competition. I won't name any names. And, I, and I'll tell you why. We've been called in to, to fix some, some things where they, they can come in and do something cheaper. But what they'll do is they'll put their beams maybe 8 or 10, 12 feet apart. And it's like, what are you doing? Why would you even put them in at all? You're, you could be potentially creating a bigger problem. Because when you put those beams against the wall, you have to tie it in to the floor joist up above. Well, if you don't have another beam for another 10 feet, you're putting a whole lot of pressure on that one beam from the pressure on the outside pushing on it. So you have to spread your load out. In order to spread the load, you put more beams in, and you put your beams closer together. Okay? Very important. If you don't, you can buck a floor upstairs. Um, you can split the floor joists because there's too much pressure on that one location. So some people might think that we do an overkill. Yeah, maybe in a way we do. But what we're doing, is that's why we've never had a warranty call ever. And when you sell it, it's not on your shoulders anymore. It's on mine. So I have to stand behind it after you're out of the picture. And I want to make sure that we never get a phone call. So when it's done, it's going to be done right. Uh, it's going to be done the right way. So we'll put those beams, if you want to kind of get a ballpark idea, let's say you've got a 30-foot wall. We're going, to, we're going to put beams in about every four feet. Now, there can be exceptions. If it's really pushed in bad, like we've had some, I just quoted in Crown Point a while back, where right in the corner, there was a huge oak tree on the other side that had been cut down, and it had bulged from the corner to here, bulged in so bad, we put three beams right in that area. It was just really, really bad. Whoa, sorry. Um, so look for specialized areas, and, and I, I can't give you an exact, but if we do go with, with one beam every four feet, each beam, if we're just bracing, is typically going to run you $500, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, as a ballpark. $500 per beam. Per beam. This whole job, well, we did the waterproofing all the way around. We did the beams all the way around. It was around 30 grand. I start to finish everything. Yeah. What, what are you factoring with? Uh, you know what? We throw anything we want in there. When we're done, that wall can't ever move, so we just put the back, we just put right back into it what came out. Are you it's putting drain, save you a lot drain of tile around it then? I'm sorry? Drain tile with a... No, we don't even mess with that. Well, if we're doing the waterproofing on the inside, I don't need waterproofing on the outside. Now, if all we're doing is they're, a char uh, they're hiring us to dig out on the outside, push that wall, then we will repair what they've got down there um, if, if it needs to be. You know, if you need us to repair that. Typically, though, we're trying to stay off of that drain tile. So we'll skim across the footing, but not get down beside it to tear up the drain. So, so then we just put the clay, sand, gravel, whatever you got right back in. Because we've got a stronger wall. Let me give you one uh, other example. Remember the flood in 08 uh, that hit Highland and Munster really crazy bad? And the water came up over and made Munster a, a lake. Um, the year before, um, there's a house I could take it to on River Drive in Munster that we had gone in and did this. We just braced all the walls. Didn't straighten them, braced them. And um, right next to him was another house, and he really needed his done too. But he had just bought it, and he had a friend that was a block layer. And he said, no, no, I don't want brand new wall. Hey! I said, it's going to cost you twice as much money. And you're still not going to have it. It's supported on the inside. you still got a hollow hole in the middle, you know, called your basement. And uh, he's still, you know, there's a reason this bowed in. You, you need support on the inside. He said, no, I want brand new walls. My friend, he knows what he's doing. He's good. Said, okay. So a year later, the flood hit. And um, the one that we did, I saw him outside carrying all of his garbage out, you know, all of his stuff out from his basement because of the flood. And I stopped and asked him, I said, How, how's the walls? He said, come down and look. You won't believe it. I said, oh, great. <laughs> I went down and looked. Had not budged a hair. Not a hair. And, um, and it can't. And the only way it could is if a tornado just takes the house off. Uh, you know, and then at that point, you don't care anyway. But it, <laughs> it, it, it didn't budge. But the house next to him, he did get the brand new walls in, 
The back wall was gone. It was laying in the floor. And the other three walls were all bowed in. It was teetering. It was just hanging there. Hydrostatic pressure pushed it in, and nothing could hold it. So there it looks like you have an interior perimeter drain. Yes. And how far is your beam going in? Good question. And that's number one question. Okay. And the other, on the back side, on the outside, how much clearance do you have to have to get your equipment in there to clear out? So if you have a house close to another building or another mm -hmm. house, well, we, we need a good amount of room to work because, at least, okay. yeah, because we're going to dig and then we've got to put the dirt over here. So if right next to the neighbor, you might have to get a clearance from him to say, yeah, it's okay to put the dirt on, on my land and then when, you, when you're done, just fix my yard, you know, something like that. But I would say 90% of the time, we can just brace it. We don't have to straighten it. If we are going to straighten it, um, figure about how many beams you think we're probably going to use. Uh, and then instead of 500, you're probably looking at 900 a beam for us to dig out and straighten. That, that's rough guess. Don't hold me to those numbers. I'm, just, I'm trying to give you some numbers that you can use so that when you got to real quick come up with an idea um, so you can get, get your bid in, um, kind of, you know, give you the edge over somebody else. Yes? Uh, I was wondering, do you guys do... Uh... So what if you have a footing that collapsed? A footing that's collapsed? Okay, that's a, that's a good question too, and that's another issue, and I didn't finish your other question, uh, which was how far down in the floor? Yeah, those go into the footing, right? Um, they don't go into the footing. Uh, I don't want to get too complicated, but your floor is usually about four inches on its done right. We're breaking that four inches out. We're going to drop it down four inches and set it on top of the footing. Then what we do... Uh, to make sure it can't move into the floor, in the floor, uh, which it will still be sitting above our drain system if we put a drain system in. That's going to be down beside the footing. Then we take a piece of angle iron, which is a one inch by one inch angle, like an L-shaped angle iron. We cut that and wedge it between the beam and the original section of the floor. So it's down in the floor, wedged in there. Then when we concrete in, around it. It's concrete and steel and reinforced. It's not moving. It's never been moved. Yeah. Good questions. And what you were asking, uh, the gentleman back here was asking, if your footing is cracked and settled and all that. Now, if you've got your house and you can lay a ball on the floor and it goes rolling without you pushing it, and, and that kind of thing, and you start walking and you're walking downhill, you know, in the living room or something, uh, that is a settlement issue. That's not a bowed wall. That's going to be what's required for what's called peering. P-I-E-R-I-N-G. Peering. Peering is where we would dig out and we would install what they call piers. Um, we use the style which is like giant screws. So we screw those things down on the ground with hydraulic machines and it might go 20, 30, 40 feet, however far it needs to go. And we do those about every seven feet along that area that has dropped. Then we can hook a bracket under your footing, hook to that pier that we just screwed down in the ground, and we can lift up on the house, okay? And, and, and secure it and stabilize it. My brother and I both went for all of our training years and years ago, and they started telling us to now be careful with this and telling us all the dangers of everything. And, and we knew one guy that got killed doing this and that, one guy this, that, you know. I said, you know what, I think this would be a good job for you. So, uh, uh, he loves it. He enjoys the peering, and whenever we get issues like that, I call my brother Eric, get him over here, and he helps us with the peering issues. So we can do that as well if, if you need that. All part per peer? Um, probably two grand or so a peer, and it's not, if you're doing like one wall, it's not uncommon to have maybe six. So, I mean, I'm just kind of throwing some numbers out there. It's just really hard to say. Um, uh, or something like that, but typically about every six to seven feet apart, we're going to place those. So, yes? I've been looking at a house that has, I think it used to be a crawl space, so the foundation originally comes down, and then they dug a basement, so about two or three feet over, is another, like, maybe a three-foot wall. Mm -hmm. Now, and I think it needs the bracing, 
Now, are you able to do the bracing? Or very, very possible. What he's describing here is what's known as a Michigan-style basement. Now, what that was, what that is, if you ever get into a basement and you say, how come they got this concrete ledge all the way? Have you ever seen one of those? What that was, that used to be a crawl space. And somebody decided, hey, let's make a basement out of this. Well, you can't just start right where the walls are and dig straight down because you could undermine your footing and collapse your wall. Okay? So what they do is they step in two or three feet, dig down, put a footing in, pour a half wall that might come up this high, and then they pour a cap, concrete cap, over to the original footing. Okay? So they're just, they're just creating a barrier to hold that dirt back. Is all they're doing. It's called a Michigan, I don't know why they call it Michigan style basement, but that's what it is. But there are times we can do some things to repair those as well. I can't give you numbers because everything's totally different on that as far as how bad it is or what needs to be done. Uh, we can get in, into a lot of one. Uh, there's a gentleman over here we did a weird uh, job for uh, in Gary. Where, where, I was talking to him before we started. Um, was that you? We did it. Uh, it, it, was it Miller who we did that? Yeah, and it was one of those weird, one-of-a-kind situations, but uh, we came over and looked at it, and he had to have crawl space wall re-blocked in the area, so we took care of that. Um, so, and I don't know how we're doing on time, so you can just tell me. We've got a couple more minutes. We're doing pretty good. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay, let me, uh, um, if, I guess that was it. Good, we went through the slides then. Um, let me just open up for questions, if you have any questions. You were so great about giving us estimates on what this costs and money, and that's unbelievably helpful, because I know most of the people in these rooms have to walk through a house and figure out what our budget is going to be in a couple of minutes sometimes, and at best in a couple hours. Um, can you give us any idea, for some of these things, how long it's going to take to get these things mm -hmm. finished? This has been our craziest, busiest year we've had ever, and uh, we and um, we've got we got three or four crews going, um, and three or four guys on each crew. But like I said, what we have tried to do with our house flippers, our investors, we try to work with you because we want to build long-term relationships. Uh, with you. So we know you're working on time frames, oh, schedules, and normally with our kind of stuff, most of the time you need to get us in and out first. Um, and and if, there, if the walls are finished, we do ask that you gut it, get it all taken care of for us first. Then we come in, do our thing, get out of your way. Um, let's say you've got 150 linear feet for an interior drain tile to put in. We try to do at least 50 feet a day. Okay, so that you could look at that and say, okay, this is going to probably take about three days. Um, for our basement beams, um, I could spend a, I could spend hours telling you why, and I don't I don't just say this. Why I know that our system, the way we do things, we have I have studied every competitor and everything that that other people are doing that's similar, and we have tweaked things to to make it the best of the best. And um, there's been some companies that have asked us to buy them, and I've looked at their systems and said, and eh, no, you don't have anything even close to what we do. Um, and so, so I say all that for a particular reason, and I have no idea now because I just uh, I lost my train of thought. Anybody ever do that? Uh, <laughs> but um, so I, I say that to say um, we want to try to give you the tools to get your job done as fast as possible. There's a lot, several house flippers we've worked with for years, and they only use us because we we have one um, particular house flipper. Uh, I know Adrian knows him. Um, he he had us do uh, interior drain tile systems for him years ago, only because he uh, the guy that he was using um, uh, was busy. And I said, well, let me throw you up at the tops. I want to prove to you what we can do. Since then, he's recommended us to a lot of other flippers and said, I've never seen a company that's mostly, you know, people that are in our industry, um, not real high profession, on the professional scale. He said, I've never seen a company like yours that operates uh, as professionally. And I don't say that 
just to brag. I want to prove to you what we can do for you. Um, the only way we win is if we win together. And the only way I win is if I can do something, bring, bring something to the table to help you be successful and make you profitable. And then, it, 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 then that makes me successful, makes you successful. So, yes, sir. Hey, um, on your Okay, we do have a company that works with us called Interbank, which is a contractor financing company, just like if you went to um, Lazy Boy to finance furniture, they can finance you right on the spot. We got a company that um, we can call, and in 10 minutes they give you up or down. Um, and homeowners, um, uh, you can, um, uh, since you do own the home, even though it's going to be a <coughs> you're going to sell it or whatever, you can uh, qualify to get a loan through them. And um, it's for the five-year loan, they've got a couple options. They've got like a one-year savings cash, and you can flip it, and then um, pay it off. Um, they do have things like that. But now, because of that, they charge us a huge fee. So we do tack 4% on to that loan price because they hit us pretty hard on that. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, hydrostatic pressure is crazy. Um, that's what happened on those basement walls I was telling you about in Munster, where the one house, to, the walls collapsed. Hydrostatic pressure is incredible. And we, and where we see it most of the time is where the groundwater comes up um, and uh, the water table rises and it creates incredible pressure uh, on the floor. And so if we put the drain tile in around, it eliminates all the hydrostatic pressure. It, it will push, even in the hard clay, it will come up and push, trying to get in. So it's pushing all the way to the edges. When it finds the drain system, the pressure's gone. It just goes into the drain system, around to the pit, and gets pumped up. Yes? Two-part question. Um, what areas I would say it's probably pretty, for that part of your question, pretty evenly spread all over the county. Um, we've got a lot of different soils. You know, down south we've got more hard clays. You know, uh, up in here we've got uh, you know, a lot of sand. Um, but one is not really worse than the other. We see it We see it pretty evenly distributed everywhere. Now, I will tell you this, because this is something, you're buying houses in different locations and uh, listening to where some of you are located in different places. Somebody asked, do we work in Illinois? Uh, we do. Uh, depends on what it is. We're not going to go to Chicago or Tinley Park to raise a, uh, a patio or, or to um, you know, raise, raise a stoop. You know, it, it's just not cost effective. We just can't do it. Um, and, um, uh, but if, if it is a foundation thing, it's, it's a decent sized job, um, we would consider going out further. Uh, we are not licensed. We're licensed everywhere except in Gary and in Hammond. Now, yeah. and a lot of you know why. Okay. That being said, that does not mean we have not worked in Gary or in Hammond. Um, and we take that case by case. Um, there are several guys, house flippers, real estate agents, that have called us and said, hey, I got one in Hammond. Can you just go look at it? If it's going to be something we can get in on Saturday and we're done and we're out, not a problem. We can do that. Uh, we, we, we took a chance uh, a while back and we went in and we braced all the basement walls. But we were cautious and careful what we did, how, you know, how we approached it and where we parked it and various things. Like that. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but with that being said, you know, um, there are times that we've done things like that. Um, but, so we just have to be a little bit careful what it is. <laughs> This job here, uh, we were probably there for two weeks. Yeah, we had to take the driveway out and throw up the dumpster and everything. There was a lot involved that we had to do with that. Yeah. So yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so I have two questions. First, all the way back to one of those <coughs> slides where you did the driveway uh -huh. in the Highland style home. 
Can that be uh, stained concrete to make it more aesthetically pleasing? Can that be what? Stained concrete oh, stained. to make it more aesthetically pleasing? Yeah, I guess you could. What um, about that rubber caulking that you put in there? How would that react to that? Yeah, that, that, that won't uh, stain. Okay. Now, you could patch it and then stain everything, but the problem with that is, with our freezing and thawing in, in our locale, um, you're going to have movement in the wintertime, and all those cracks are going to show back up again. Okay, and then what if I have concrete that is um, not disintegrating, it's crumbling? Can you remember yeah. that? Um, there's not a lot we can do with that. I, years and years and years ago, I, uh, I tried for one year, I was going to get into uh, resurfacing. I and, and I said, I'm going to be the best one out there doing that. And I learned a lot about it and learned how the key to the whole thing is prep. Prepping that new surface, that surface uh, to really get bond. the material, bond to it. But even ours was popping, some of it, because of the weather. Yeah. And so I just got away from it and I said, you know what? I don't recommend to anybody to do the resurfacing on exterior concrete. It just doesn't last. And then when it starts popping off, it, looked up, it looks uglier than when you started. What I recommend to people is try to um, just, um, uh, if you're not going to replace it, then try to uh, keep it where it's at and not get any worse. And one thing you can do is to seal it every couple of years. And, but don't go get Thompson's water seal from Menards. You, don't, you might as well pour water on it. You know, just, um, just don't do that. Go to like White Cap. If you know where that's at, anybody, everybody know where White Cap is? White Cap is in Griffith. Do uh, you know where um, <coughs> Maine and, and Colfax is, where the Casey's is? Just straight south of there is a place called White Cap. And you can go in there and get. tell me I need a good concrete uh, driveway sealer. And uh, they'll you, walk you through all that. You use the white stuff or the clear stuff? Um, we use the clear. Yeah, there's been a lot of the a lot of changes with the uh, the EPA and everything with the type of sealers that can be made now with <coughs> chemicals that are in it. Um, they're not quite as good as they used to be, uh, honestly. But uh, they're more water based now than they were before. Um, but you can get a good get some good sealers there. Anybody else? Sorry. Um, how when you get to your busiest seasons, how far out are you still? From well, for the average homeowner, we've been like eight weeks out this year. Um, we're, we're, we, we work our guys six days a week, probably 60, 70 hours a week and all that. But um, um, we try, to, like I said, we try to get you guys in your own category. <coughs> yes, sir. Can you talk about the carbon fiber that you were showing earlier? How does that work? How do you apply that? With okay. The way we put that on, um, the strips we, normally, we, we have different sizes. The ones we normally use, is four, they're four inches wide. They're real thin, okay? So if this is your block wall or poured wall, either way, we're going to take a grinder and grind off the surface to get any paint or the skim coat that's, you know, on, uh, so we get down into the meat and uh, we'll grind a little bit of that off and then we um, epoxy it right to the, right to the wall. So, anyone else? And we put those about four feet apart too. Yeah. And those, all oh, our prices went crazy on the carbon fiber just a month or so ago. So if we're looking at those, we're look, we're not looking at five hundred. We're probably looking at about seven hundred fifty dollars um, carbon fiber strip. Yes. Um, how often do you have to dig it up versus just brace it to the inside? I mean, if you got like a six inch bolt in the wall, um, um, I would I would say about ninety percent of them we brace. But now so let's you say your wall is from the inside, right? I'm sorry. You can straighten it out from the inside. We well, if we're bracing it, we won't be straightening it. It'll be just like it is. It won't be any different. But it'll be guaranteed that it cannot move, and it'll be stronger than if you put a new wall in, because now you've got support from the inside. Because a wall is not made to be strong this way. It's made to be strong this way. So it can hold the weight, even if it's like this. If we brace it here. <coughs> You can't move. So how much how much do you lose the square footage off that wall? Foot? Well, uh, really, you don't have to lose uh, any more than your four inches, because you, let's say you got your uh, your beam here. 
If there's a gap, which there would be if it's bowed in very much, there's going to be a gap between the beam and the wall. We're going to pack that in with concrete. So now it can't move. It can't move at all. And I can take an hour telling you how all the other systems have failures. In. You can just look at our website. I've got them all listed there. Um, but um, what people normally do, you might not be able to stud your wall in uh, on 16 on centers. But what a lot of people do is in between our beams, they'll put studded sections in so that they just stick out as far as the beam does, four inches. And then so you're not losing any more than the four inch beam or the four inch stud. Okay? Any other quick questions? I don't want to take more time than I'm allotted. Um, you tell me. We can do a couple more. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You're saying that beam sticks out four inches? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Now, there, there's, there are some companies that do a three inch beam. Um, we do a four. Say, hey, what's the difference? Three inch, four inch? What's an inch? Well, when you're talking inches, it's everything. Because the three inch versus the four inch is uh, one third more. One inch more is 33% is more steel. Not to mention, it's a thicker steel uh, beam. So it's about a 50% stronger steel, a four inch versus a three inch. Um, the one particular guy that uses a three inch beam years ago, probably 18 years ago, he was talking to me at a show. He said, I don't tell anybody, but he said, man, I see our three inch beams bow sometimes. And I'm sort of like, duh, yeah. And not to mention, you put them eight, 10 feet apart, you need to have them four feet apart, and you need to have them, uh, you need four inch beams, <coughs> so it's not gonna budge, it won't be able to move. Yes? So you talked about uh, like the stair stepping cracks in, mm -hmm. the, in the block. Say you had a wall and you had stair stepping cracks, what would you do? Would you go and embrace that, or how would you mitigate? I mean, I'm sure it's case by case, but... Well, it is. Uh, a couple of uh, things you want to ask yourself. Number one, are you going to finish the wall off after we're done? If you are, for square foot, you're going to be able to use that space. Um, just bear in mind that um, once, you st once you frame that wall in, you're never going to be able to see what's going on inside that wall again. So it might be smart to brace that wall, especially if you're going to rent the house. If you're going to keep it and rent, if you're selling it, you have to decide <coughs> what you're planning on doing. Are you going to sell it? Are you going to keep it and rent it? Um, if you're going to keep it, you need to you know, decide, okay, once I finish this basement off, I'm not going to want to open that wall back up again. Maybe I better brace it now because it already shows weakness. Think of it this way. You could take a, a pop can and you could stack a bunch of weight on top of it, and it'll hold pretty good, right? But if you put a little bow in there, a little bend in it, it's lost all of its strength, it's gonna collapse. And that's kind of the way it makes the wall is. Yeah, it can hold a lot of weight. Once it starts doing this, it doesn't have the strength it used to have. So you're gonna to need to support it if you're gonna if you're gonna finish it off on the inside. Well, say you're not going to break it. Yeah, and I don't know all the rules. You guys would know more about that than I would. But I do know the home inspectors, people ask me this. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to buy this because, uh, and fix it up and sell it because uh, uh, nobody's going to want to buy it. You know, it's going to look so bad. Um, I bet you 60% or more of the houses we do are for people that are selling. They put it off. They, they either don't know what to do. Or it's like, yeah, I'll get to it someday. It's been away for 30 years. Um, and, and they wait, and then um, they do it when they're ready to sell. And I've never seen one um, stay on the market very long. So I, I've dealt a lot with the home, the home inspectors. Uh, they've called me and asked questions and stuff. And they love our system. And it's never held anybody back from getting the house sold. Um, and I know that because so many people wait and do it at the time of selling. Or they'll have home inspectors come in and look at it and say, get the wall repaired, get a professional to come fix it. We fix it, they buy it, it's done. Um, I had one years ago, the, the guy lived in Chicago. His mother passed away and she lived in Highland. Uh, he wanted to just get that house sold. I recommended, it was so bad, it was like that one I showed you. It was so bad, he, I told him we really should dig it out and straighten it. I don't want to spend the extra money. I just want to sell it, just brace that thing, and let me sell it. 
I said, well, all the walls need it. I said, I, I, I'm not the kind of guy that tries to make the job bigger than what it should be, but this one really needed all the walls raised, and, or straightened. He said, just do that one and that one. I said, okay, but I can look in the window wells that, where there's paneling on the other two walls. And I said, I can see those windows are really tip. The walls are bad. He said, no, nah, it'll be all right. I'll just, just do those two and I'm selling it. We, that was our last job that year. Uh, we took some time off and went to Florida. And he called me while we were down there. He said, when are you getting back? I said, well, in a couple weeks. He said, when you get back, I need, he said, I had three people. All of them said, if you fix the other two walls, I'll buy it. He said, first two, I said, no. Third one, I said, okay, I'm calling my guy. <laughs> and so, anyway. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. That was super helpful. Well, I hope so, it was. I hope that it helped you with some things. Maybe take some of the mystery out of things so that you guys can go out there with some confidence and put some bids out and get things at a cheaper rate than, than since other people aren't bidding on them. You saw that better.
25,000 uh, fixed offer. I also have uh, East Chicago property for 729, Kennedy Avenue for 25, and I have one that I would like to assign. I have it on the contract in Maryville on the 45th, East 62nd Street for 725. Anyone else have anything? Anybody else? Do you money, have money? Good question. What did you say? 47, 28? Kennedy? 47, 29. Kennedy, yeah. Adrian, I've got two deals. You ready? Do I know about them? I think you do. <laughs> I don't pay attention. 3139, 163rd place in Hammond. Uh, 49, going out of 49, it's a four bedroom, two bath, K pot, brick. Um, with an ARV of uh, uh, 145, 140 to 145. Really nice property. It was on uh, Facebook Live earlier today, so check out the website and you'll see that property. And we have a really nice retail uh, play at 2910 Churchill Lane in Highland. It's a townhouse. Um, it's going out at uh, 135. ARV is uh, 160. So a really nice uh, retail property. So that's it for me. You got anything else to add to that? Nope. Anyone right. else have anything? Awesome. Um, I am looking to hire two positions in the next 30 days um, for our wholesale company. We're looking for a lead assistant. This is something we take all of our inbound calls. We get anywhere between 30 and 40 calls a week of people wanting to sell the house. So this will gather their information, gauge your motiv motivation, and then set up an appointment for acquisitions, individual to go look at the house, buy it. So I'm looking for that position. Um, I'm also looking for someone with some expertise in marketing, uh, specifically with social media. I'm not a technology guy, I don't like it. I, I can do okay with it. Like I have a really engaging post on the group Facebook page today regarding Hammond. That's getting a lot of feedback. Um, you should go read the comments, it's pretty fun. Um, but I'm not good at that stuff, so I'm looking for someone to do our social media marketing as well as start to deal with some of our direct mail marketing and other marketing avenues. So if you have, um, whether it's yourself or you know someone that may be interested in those positions, um, you can get a hold of me. Um, you can go on our Facebook page. So um, real quick, next month, we did this last December. It was a really great turnout. Um, we're going to do it again. It's our way of giving back to you guys, so the meeting's free. Um, if you're a member, it's free. If you're not a member, it's uh, still free. Um, what we do ask, though, is that you bring a bag of non-perishable food. We're going to give it to the local um, soup kitchen in the area to help fill up their pantry for the winter for all the people that aren't as fortunate as everyone in the room here. So bring a sack of food. Your attendance is free. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have four or five speakers that did their first deal this year. Um, so if that's you, and I've had a couple of people contact me, I'm looking for someone who did their first flip, I'm looking for someone who did their first rental, their first wholesale deal, and maybe their first private loan, get a little bit of variety. We'll do like we've done in the past, we take eight to 10 minutes and kind of walk through what they did, what they were expecting, the reality, and a couple of key things they learned. And um, as I talk to people that do stuff the first time, it's, it's actually surprising to me how much new things I learned just from their experience. So we'll do that. Um, bring a guest, we'll have tons of giveaways like we did last year. Last year we gave away sweatshirts and gift cards and books and all sorts of cool stuff. So that's next month. It is the 17th. Um, quick reminder, uh, December 6th is the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. See John if you need information about that. Thanks again for coming and we'll see you next month.